finally get a fish on the line. I think I know what it is too. Well, finally, here we go. Beautiful shark, small black tip shark. Absolutely fantastic. Circle hook right in the corner of the mouth where it should be. You know, interestingly, and yes, I know, I still have to be careful doing this. I'm not grabbing its gills. I'm grabbing the edges of the jawbone. Just gonna pull this out by hand. Still gotta be careful. I mean, this guy's not gonna take my hand off, but you know, a couple of stitches, very likely possibility, make a mistake doing this. And there we go. Beautiful animal. Just, just the best. Sharks are just the best. Let's get it back quick. Walk him out into the first sandbar here. Oh. And off he goes. Quite pleased with that. Uh, I don't know what this is, and if you are a shark fisherman, comment below, I want your take on this. But, just me personally, I tend to find that if I catch a shark, and let's say I release it in the first sandbar, maybe three feet of water, up to my knees or my waist at the most, for some reason, I tend to find I get a, a, I don't want to go cliche and say a deeper connection, but I tend to feel a little bit closer to the wildlife I'm trying to observe. A little bit more as if I'm a, not a piece of that environment, but more directly involved in it, or have a better view of it, releasing the shark in slightly deeper water. Almost as if you're, you're not on the cusp of its environment saying, all right, go back. And you go out with it, and you're like, okay, I'm here on your terms. You release it. it. I don't know. It just feels better that way. It might sound strange, but I've always felt that to be the case. Whenever I can, if I can release sharks, you know, I try to get down at least in chest deep water. Not, not walk out to that depth, but I try to get myself down to where at least I am at that depth. It just feels um, a better experience in the end, I believe. So that's the rig. Double drop. Just scaled up. And I've got on two very small circle hooks. Just perfect for sharks. 50 pound monofilament. When, you, when you're catching these little guys, you don't need wire. It's not necessary. Thick monofilament will handle them every time. So I'm gonna head out there, cast out again. Interesting thing. I was wading up to neck deep water, casting as far as I could and getting nothing. And I saw a guy over there, and he cast out from about waist deep water, about half the distance I was, caught a shark right off the bat. So it's interesting, you know, you always think about sharks Typically beach fishing in general, if you ever watch guys go out to a pier and they go down to the very end of the pier and they cast as far as they possibly can into the ocean, sometimes that pays off, but a lot of the times it's more of a case of finding where the fish are on a given day as opposed to expecting them to be as far away as possible. And it seems like these small sharks are just cruising right after the first sandbar, so we don't have to go very far at all.
got something on light tackle, hopefully a whiting. Good size whiting. Very nice fish, just right in the, right off the first sandbar with some shrimp. I've got a fire going, so I think if I get maybe one or two more of these, I'll cook them up and actually eat them right here on the beach. It'd be quite nice. had a strong hit. I don't feel anything now, but it was a very aggressive take. Okay, maybe. Yes, 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 yes. No, no, no. As far as hard heads go, it's about as big as they get. Luckily, circle hook right in the corner of the jaw. I still have my bait. That's the thing about catfish, you know. Circle hooks really are the way to go when you're catfishing or when you're uh, when you have a high high likelihood of hooking one. Otherwise, I just swallow your your hook and bait and everything with it and be done. But nope, this guy is going to go free. Decent sized fish, first species. Really interesting. If you look right there by my ring finger. You can see the turquoise coloration. That kind of sea green with that turquoise inlay there and of course always the purple and black on the tail not my favorite but always worth having a look By no means am I a culinary expert of any sort, but I will go on the record to say, by far, fish skin roasted to where it's crispy is underrated. Pretty good stuff. That's a fish I did not expect to see biting on a double drop rig for black tip. Look at this. There we have it. Flounder. Beautiful flatfish. Absolutely phenomenal. White on one side, because that's the side you're not going to see if you're either predator or prey. And this side just blends into the sand. 
incredibly well and then you've got two eyes on one side and look at that coloration in that eye is absolutely fantastic really voracious predator these guys I mean that is the last thing a lot of small fish ever see loads of sharp teeth including some backwards facing teeth inside the throat wonderful wonderful animal now a lot of the times you'll hear fishermen or biologists probably more so talk about the lateral line it's a sensory organ that fish have that runs right down their central flank right here and it's kind of hard to spot on a lot of species but check this out flip this fish over and follow my thumb here you can actually see the lateral line fantastic so neat and of course that tail you get the best coloration there anyway he's been out long enough ah so cool the frills the little spikes on the end of his I guess that would be his this is pectoral fin pelvic fin I don't know that's a very long pelvic fin and of course his dorsal let's get him back in the water